If you knew me then, believe me now, turn my whole life upside down. He took the old and he made me new. That's what the mercy of a God can do. Now I'm alive to tell the story.
Jeremiah chapter number 32, Jeremiah chapter number 32. We're going to be in a few places this morning as we start here in Jeremiah chapter number 32. If you're in the habit of marking places in your Bible, we'll, we'll find our way in Genesis 21, Matthew 19, and also Luke chapter number 1. 
Typically, as I preach or teach, I stay in a certain chapter, unless it's a certain subject where there's other Bible verses, Scripture that validates, that teaches. I usually like to be line upon line and walking through the Scripture. However, in Genesis chapter number 32, there's something, if you've ever done word studies, if you've ever done any kind of study in the Bible that has to do with a specific word itself or maybe a phrase that the Lord uses or something that's said, you find one of probably the most remarkable ones that you'll find throughout the Word of God in Jeremiah chapter number 32. To give you a little bit of context as we dive into it, in Jeremiah chapter number 32, you're at a place where Jeremiah is literally preaching, as you know, to a number of people asking them to be able to turn to the Lord. Jeremiah was known as a re- weeping prophet. He preached and for years would never see anything that would come out of it. He knew that judgment was coming, but yet he had a heart for the people that he preached to. If you study his life, you know that he was one that would constantly mourn and he would be broken over it. It wasn't something that he took lightly. It was almost, if I can say it this way, to Jeremiah, Though he was called to do what he was doing, it almost seemed like it was bigger than him. It was too hard for him to do. And it was like sometimes that he did not know why the Lord would let him and keep him doing what he was doing. But the one thing that Jeremiah chose was this, is that as long as God's going to have me to preach to these people, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to preach. I'm going to teach. My love. As you know about Jeremiah, I'm going to warn. He constantly, continually warned the people over and over and over to be able to look to God because he knew that there was going to come a time where if they did not turn, that there was going to be some kind of judgment that was going to be brought. Pick up there in verse number 16 of Jeremiah, chapter number 32. If you're there this morning, say amen. The Bible says this, verse number 16. Now, when I had delivered the evidence of the purchase of unto Barak, the son of Neriah, I prayed unto the Lord, saying, Notice here we're entering into a prayer of Jeremiah. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. And there is nothing too hard for thee. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompense the iniquity of the fathers and to the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord God of hosts is his name. Great in counsel and mighty in work, for thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You notice, if you will, in verse number 16, the Bible says he prayed unto the Lord. I remind you, the situation that Jeremiah was in was a situation that was very hard. It was very difficult. It wasn't one that many people would sign up for. And I know that you may not be a preacher. Some of you may. But to be able to understand the relevance to this, you've got to be able to see that there are some things that God calls you to do, chooses for you to go through. He puts you in that place, relationships, situations that does not seem to be sometimes an easy situation it's not something that people would sign up for if there was something by choice by any means so when Jeremiah came to this place in his life he needed some help and I want you to notice in verse number 16 the same thing that you and I need today is the same thing that he realized that day and that his help did not come from church They come from people. Notice as the Bible says in verse number 16, I prayed unto the Lord. Can I tell you something? That's exactly where you and I need to take every single burden in our life. We need to take it to the Lord. I'm not talking about some, not the ones that you can handle, not the ones you think you can control, not the ones that's not uh, at the same magnitude as the other ones. No, every single situation in your life You need to walk with the Lord and seek the Lord's direction of everything. Why? Because only the Lord knows 
what's best in your life. God has a plan, as he says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 11. I know the thoughts that I think of you. And he says, you have a what? An expected end. So God knows what's going on in your life. And he knows why you are in the situation that you're currently in. But I want you to notice a phrase found in the latter part of verse number 17. This is what I'm interested in. Notice, if you will, the Bible says this. There is nothing too hard for thee. I want you to say that with me. There is nothing too hard for thee. I want you to say it again. There is nothing too hard for thee. In chapter 32, verse number 17, this was a statement. You ever had that moment in your life? Where by confidence, with assurance, you knew that God was God, God was in control, that everything was going to be all right. I mean, that day when it seemed like that it, everything was exactly the way that it should be, that's exactly where Jeremiah, he, he had some confidence. Even though he was in a hard situation and he was battling some things and he knew that God had put him in that position. But you notice there in verse number 17 that with assurance he said that nothing is too hard for thee. It was an absolute statement that he made knowing that that is the character of God and God can take care of everything that he faces. But I want you to notice, if you will, in the next few verses, skip down with me, if you will, to verse number 26. He makes that statement in verse number 17, but in verse number 26, notice what the Bible says. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah. Can I stop there for a second and say this? When you talk to God, God will talk to you. This is why it matters that you go to the Lord with your problems. This is why you go to the Lord with your situations, with the problems that you deal with that nobody knows, with the burdens, with the complications of your life. This is why it matters because, thank God, we have a God that when we talk to Him, He will talk back to us. And I praise the Lord for that this day. But notice what it says in verse number 27. Behold, I am the Lord, he says, the God of all flesh. And then notice the question. Is there anything too hard for me? Now, Jeremiah in verse number 17 just said, there's nothing too hard for thee. But then you pick up here in this verse, and he says to Jeremiah by question, is there anything too hard for me? You say, Brother Jason, why would God ask that question? We understand if you study the Bible, he's not looking for an answer. God knows the answer. He's not asking a question for you to enlighten him, to, for you to open up to him, for you to be able to show him some things that he does not know. That's not the reason why God is asking this question. He is turning around and asking a question based on the same exact statement that he made, literally because what he's doing to Jeremiah is he's reminding Jeremiah of the very statement that he made, that the same God that you said in verse number 17, that nothing is too hard for him I want you to know right now Jeremiah I'm the same God in verse number 27 and still nothing is too hard for me you ever been there this morning you ever been in a place in your life where God had to get you there and your faith was strong on Sunday and man it was great when church was great and the marriage was great and the ministry was great and life was great and, and you knew looking back to yesterday just like they sung a little while ago that I look back I've come too far you know you know you know you know that God has been good and, and God has been faithful but then in the blink of an eye being blindsided by something that sometimes nobody ever sees that you never see that you never knew that the doctors didn't know that the church didn't know that your spouse didn't know and that same confidence that you had at the last thing is now a question that God brings because you feel like I can't you say things like I don't know how can I keep going on can I handle this? I don't know what to do. And God looks at you and he asks you a question based on the statement saying these words, is anything too hard for me? And at that moment, the Holy Ghost reminds you, your faith is not as strong sometimes as you want it to be. You may be all put together sometimes, but you're put together on the outside don't mean that it's not put together on the inside or that it is put together on the inside. 
There's some times where the Lord reminds you that, listen, that if you trusted him yesterday, you can trust him today. But this is not a time to tap out. This is not a time to throw in a towel. This is not a time to say, God can't. This is not a time to quit and back up and pun and say, it's too much. It's too long. It's too hard. No. Why? Because the same God that helped you yesterday is the same God that can and will help you today. And literally nothing is too hard for the Lord. If you believe that, say, Amen. So you're able to be able to see that he reminds him. Reminds him. He wants him to know that Jeremiah, when you're at a place where you fall short, God is still able. Jeremiah, where you're at a place where you're weak, God is still strong. Jeremiah, where you're at your end, that's the beginning of God. We always say that it's always at the end of yourself is where you see the beginning of God. That's where God does his greatest work. Sometimes the biggest complication that we have in our life is not about God. It's not about people. It's not about the problem. No, we've never got to the end of ourselves when we're still, we're still trying to hold it. We're trying to control it. We're trying to fix it. We're trying to understand it. We want everybody to think that we've got it all figured out, but God says, the only reason why I can't do this is because it's you that's in the way. It's not the problem. It's not the situation. It's not the people. No, it's you that's in the way. And when you get to the end of yourself, that's when you see the beginning of God. I want to use this phrase found in verse number 17. That nothing is too hard for the Lord this morning. I want you to turn back now, if you will. I want to show four places in the scripture where it uses this phrase. Turn back to Genesis chapter number 21, if you will, this morning. It's the first place you see it in the Bible. Many of you know this story. When you come here, you're going to be able to see that Abraham and Sarah, they're at a place to be able to be years that typically the things they're thinking about is not the things that is about to happen. And matter of fact, in the Bible, it says in Genesis chapter number 21, verse number 5, if you will notice, he says that literally that Abraham is what? He was 100 years old. When Isaac, his son, when his son Isaac was born unto him. So you know that you look at this story and you see that this is where Abraham was 100, where Sarah was 90 years of age. They both were told that they're going to have child, but they understand that that almost seems to be impossible. It, it may have sounded something like this, Lord, we're too old. We cannot do this. This don't make sense to us. We cannot handle this. This, this is complicated to us. This is, this is overwhelming to us. I say that simply because it was a roller coaster ride for both Abraham and for Sarah. Matter of fact, turn back, if you will, look at chapter number 18. When she got the news, Sarah knew how old she was. But the Bible says, if you will, in chapter number 18, verse number 12, listen to this. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself. You know what that laughter is? That laughter is doubt. In chapter number 18, she literally had doubt. Yeah, I mean, they knew God was good. They knew that God was faithful, but she had doubt in her mind. Listen, there's no way that I can deal with this. Surely, watch me now, surely God's not going to let me go through something like that. That's exactly what Sarah was saying in that moment. So she laughed at God. Now listen, you can be judgmental if you want to, but before you judge her, turn back another chapter. Look at chapter number 17 at verse number 17. It was not just uh, Sarah who laughed, but the Bible says in chapter number 17, verse 17, then Abraham fell upon his face and what? And he laughed. So both of them were in a position where literally they doubted God. They thought there is no way that this is going to happen. Back in chapter number 18, if you will, I want you to notice what the Bible says, picking up there in verse number 12 again. And Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being so old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I, shall, shall I of a, a surety bear a child which am old? Then notice verse number 14. Here's the first time you see it in the Word of God. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return to thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. So I want you to notice here that literally she was in a place to where she laughed at God, and then God looked at her and he said, Is anything hard for the Lord? Let me, I want you to write this thing down. I want you to write down all four of these principles. First of all, I want you to write this down that nothing is too hard for the Lord in our perplexities. Nothing is too hard for the Lord in our perplexities. What do you mean by perplexities, Brother Jason? Things that literally are complicated. 
things that don't make sense, things that you cannot do by yourself, that it don't seem like it's something for you. It's going to be overly complicated that really you have the inability to even deal with it. If it's not for God, there's no way you're going to make it. And can I tell you something? You listen to me, what I'm about to say, that God will allow you to go through things in your life that you do not understand. God will allow you to go through things that you cannot figure out. God will allow you to go through things that you cannot change. It makes no difference how hard you kick and how much you fuss it makes no difference how much you scream or whatever it is you say whatever it is that's in your life God will allow you to go through these things that you cannot handle there's going to be some things that you're not going to be able to straighten out and the flesh of you is going to say over and over and over I need to figure this out it's going to empty you of yourself it's going to empty you of your strength you're going to lose sleep over it because you're going to toss and turn wondering how in the world do I overcome this how do I fix this how do I connect the dots from A to B to C to D to E to F and going all the way down the alphabet but at the end of the day do everything you want to do you do not have the knowledge you do not have the ability you do not have the strength you do not have the power you have absolutely nothing in your life that you need and at that moment you realize that even in those things that are complicated in your perplexities that you realize that nothing is ever too hard for the Lord you believe that say ma'am Sarah and Abraham was at this place to where they doubted God and there might be somebody here today that that's exactly where you are. You're doubting God. You don't want to stand up and say it. But what you're going through, what you're facing, what you're dealing with, the burden that's on your shoulders, whatever it is, it is something that is too big for you and you are doubting that this is something that's even going to be real, that it's going to be realistic, that it's even going to come to pass because when you look at it, you look at it from your perspective. And friend, listen to me, from your perspective, it's never going to work out. From your perspective, it's never going to make sense. From your perspective, it's never going to be turned inside out and turned the right way. No, it's never going to happen. Why? Because God is trying sometimes to get you to the end end of yourself so that you learn that when you do get to the end of yourself that that's when God will do his greatest work why because no matter what you face nothing is ever too hard for the Lord I want to share this with you though and I'll move on because if that's you today it may not be anybody else but it might be you it might be you today and it may be something that you're trying to shake something you're trying to deal with you say God can you turn this around I want you to notice, if you will, back in our text there, Genesis chapter 21, just turn back over to that page. After the Bible says that literally that Abraham was 100 years old, I want you to notice this in verse number 6. The Bible says, and Sarah said, notice now, now they have child, okay? This is after the story. The Bible says, and Sarah said, God had made me to laugh. Now, the Bible says, a few chapters earlier that she laughed at God because she was doubting but now you notice she gives credit to God and what she's saying is God had made me laugh do you see the difference in the way that she speaks I'll tell you what happened God took her doubt and he turned around and made it worship and there's some of you that's going to go through some great doubts in your life and you're going to struggle and you're not going to think that I can and the truth be told you can't you can't make it you can't overcome it you can't fix it you can't save that loved one you can't do this and you can't do that but there's a God in heaven who can and when you turn around and you see how he takes your doubts and he gives you the greatest assurances it'll be a place of worship like you've never known before because you'll know when nobody else can fix your problems that God was still able to handle everything in your life why because the God that we serve is a God that no matter what you face that nothing is too hard for him in your perplexities let me give you a second thing this morning not only nothing's too hard in our perplexities but also nothing is too hard for the Lord as we pray turn back if you will to our text Genesis chapter number 32 I remind you again where we are I'm just using these four places in the Bible I'm not taking it out of context. I need you to be able to see that this is a, a principle. Watch me now. Not just Old Testament, but this is a principle even in the New Testament. The same God that was in the Old Testament is the same God in the New Testament. Somebody help me preach right there. 
And if God can do it then, God can do it now. So you see it all throughout the Bible. So now here we are the second time in the Old Testament. We pick back up there in that prayer that you notice what he said. He said literally that he prayed unto the Lord saying, Oh God, thou hast made. He begins to talk about God. I want to say this to you before I read that text. Listen to me. Even though I tell you that nothing is too hard for the Lord as you pray, I am not saying to you that God will always give you what you pray for. God ain't always going to give you what you pray for. God ain't always going to give you what you ask for. It's not always going to happen. He don't owe you anything. You say, Brother Jason, you're just saying that. No, I'm not just saying that because according to the Word of God, you study out the Bible, the, the, the whole city still burned down. Literally, the nation still turned into captivity. I mean, Jeremiah poured his heart out with everything that he had. And in the days that was coming up ahead of him, listen, can you imagine can you imagine how he felt? He, he's calling out to God all the time, and these people are not listening, but he has dedicated himself. He has devoted himself. He has emptied himself and submitted himself and surrendered his life. And yet in the midst of it all, after he has given everything that he could, he turns around and he prays, but yet it still burns down. The nation still turns to captivity. Have you ever been in a moment like that in your life when you prayed and you prayed and you prayed and you said, God? Are you not listening to me? I, I don't understand, and it seems like God is a thousand miles away. Well, I'm telling you, just because you pray don't mean God's going to give you always what you pray for. But I will say this, you will learn as you pray that nothing is too hard for the Lord as you pray. How do you know that, Brother Jason? I want you to notice what the text says. Notice, if you will, he discovered that God was enough. Verse number 17, notice what the Bible says. Oh, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, notice this, and stretched out arm. He talks about him as creator. He begins to talk about the power of God. Do you see now what he's doing? He's rehearsing the, the character of God. He's saying, you know what? Things might not be worked out. They might not be the way that I want them to be. There may be a lot of things that's going to change. But watch me now. We live in a changing world. Amen and amen and amen. Things change, finances change, politics change, people change. Y'all help me now. You change, I change. Look around this room. You may never see this room the same ever again because there are people right now that are in this room, unfortunately, that the devil's doing everything to be able to get you out of church. And there may be a day where that person never comes back. You may never be setting in this setting again whatsoever, literally because people change. Even those people that like Peter get up and say, Lord, Lord, I'll die for you. I, I'll do anything, Lord, that you want me to do. You know that I'm with you. Peter had good intentions. Brother Charlie, his heart was to be able to serve the Lord. But in Luke chapter number 22, the Bible says that Jesus looked at him and he said, Simon, Simon, that was Peter's name. He said, Simon, Simon, behold. In other words, look at me, look at me, eyeball to eyeball. He said, Satan, Satan had desired to sift you as wheat. What he was telling Peter was this, you're about to go through some things. You're about to face some things, and it's not easy. Have you ever learned the sifting process, how it beats down as it pitchfork throws it in the air, and as it goes through all of those different things? I'm talking about an excruciating process. Sometimes the things that we pray for in our life, it turns out to be a process that we never wanted, we never asked for, we never desired. Not one time, not one time, but all the time we know this. Peter had good intentions. And you be careful today because you might think it might not ever be you. You might think I would never do that. That would never happen to me. I would, nobody could ever do nothing that I would not forgive. Be very careful, friend, how you speak. Be very careful because that table could turn. And I'm here to tell you that sometimes the greatest things in your life end up being the greatest hurts in your life. Sometimes the greatest people, the closest people are the one that's going to cut you the deepest. Amen, preacher, preach it straight. I'm telling you right. But what I'm trying to say is this, that everything that you have today, everything that you sing about today, because you're happy, because you're thankful, because God is blessing you. Listen, he could take all of those things tomorrow. Why? Because as long as you live in this life, things will always change. But there's one that will never change. And this is how Jeremiah got through these things. 
This is how he was able to be able to press on even though his prayer was not answered the way that he wanted to. He knew as he began to remind himself, he was not focused on the people. He was not focused on the rebellion. He was not focused on their ears that were not listening. He was not focused on the way that he did not have a companion that could really help him. He had every reason to stop. He had every reason to throw in the towel and, and say that it's too hard, it's too difficult. But in the midst of that prayer, oh, he began to cry out to God. And notice as he did, he rehearsed the character of God. Notice at verse number 17, he rehearsed the power of God. Verse number 18, he talked about, about the loving kindness of God. Verse number 19, he talked about the work of God. Verse number 19, he talked about the Word of God. Verse number 19, he says it's the eyes that sees everything. Why? Because he knew that God never changed. And as the Lord said about himself, I am the Lord, I change not. If I had power yesterday and I worked yesterday and my word was sufficient yesterday, then the same thing that was good for yesterday is the same thing that you can count on today. I'm telling you, even in the midst of the hardest moment of your life, when prayers are not answered the way that you want them to be answered, when things are not working out in your favor, even when you empty yourself and submit yourself and surrender everything, and not just you, but your family, you sacrifice it all. Listen, I want to tell you, you keep on keeping on. Why? Because as you pray, you're going to realize that nothing's too hard for the Lord because even though everything else changes, your joy, your joy, your joy, it can remain the same because your joy ought to be in the Lord and not the things of this world. Last night, my wife began to testify. She said for three, 365 days, from December 21, Last year, she prayed a prayer. Ask God to do things. Of course, we don't have to elaborate. You have your own things that you've prayed for, and it seemed like God said no. God says no. God says no. Matter of fact, everything you prayed for, if you pray for the sunshine, it's like God sent the rain. If you prayed for something to stop, it was like God opened up the gate. If you was praying to be able to hear, it was like God went silent. Everybody all right? You understand what I'm saying to you? I mean, I, and she's talking about year, I mean, month after month and week after week. And I know I, I lived in the same house. I lived in the same boat. I understood. I understood. She again talked about as she came through the end of that year in 2022. And of course, we came down to that youth meeting. And of course, we had pressed it. And this no thing. You know, God always has a plan and he always has a purpose and he always has a way that he does some things. We're trying to take some of our youth who were willing and able to be able to go down to uh, that meeting that was at the conference they had at wintertime. And, of course, it's not usually on our yearly calendar, so we really didn't press it a lot. We went down there, and I was speaking, and she was going to be speaking as well. So as we went down there, of course, our son and a friend had went down there. Again, 300, almost literally 365 days of praying over and over and over lord stop watch this now lord i can't lord it's hard lord i can't sleep lord i'm supposed to be a mom i'm supposed to be a pastor's wife why is my faith getting thin and then we get down in december 2022 that night people go around the altar You've heard the story, but then we see our son. Friends get around the altar and begin to pray. The story goes, of course, that night was the night that Nolan accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. And he was alone with his mom riding down the road. And Tiff's testimony, she could tell you different, probably tell you better. She said, and he told me, he said, after I've seen all that we'd went through, everything we went through, has I seen God. And I realized just how real God was. It made me understand that I was not truly saved. And this is what Tiffany said. If God would have ever answered my prayer. In January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. If, if God would have ever said, okay, Tiff, you know what's best for your life. So I'm just going to let you have it your way. I'm sure everything's just going to be fine. If God would have ever for one second did that. Who's to say that our son would have ever accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior? 
She said to her, and of course to me and to anybody else, it'd be the same. It's worth it all. But listen, we got to thank God that no matter what we face and when we pray, even when he don't answer our prayer the way we want to, the Lord, the Lord is still able to take care of everything and nothing is too hard for the Lord. So just because your situations don't change don't mean that God has changed. Everybody all right? Nothing's too hard for the Lord. And let me just say this. This is a little side note, just in case you don't know. You know those prayers that I said that he was praying? Well, the city did burn down and the nation did turn into captivity. But thank God at the end of the story, listen, it was not the last chapter of the book. You go back and you study about that city and you study about those people. Listen, that city was built. Everything was made. Matter of fact, the actual mount that it was that day is still there today. So what I'm trying to say is God answered his prayer after it looked like he didn't answer his prayer. But at the end of the day, he ended up answering his prayer and God took care of everything God said he would take care of. You know, sometimes, listen, sometimes what you go through when God says no ain't for you, it's for somebody else. Amen. How many things right now are you praying for? It's like God hadn't answered prayer. Have you ever thought maybe you're praying the wrong way? Have you ever stopped instead of trying to guide God through your prayers? Lord, you know if you just fix Brother Charlie, just make him have a soft heart, make him good look and praise God. They'll have a good marriage. And God says, no. Where's that little girl? She's over there. He said, instead, I'm going to send you a little girl from an addiction family. But we're old. You are, not her. <laughs> hey, man, I've already started in the doghouse with ice cream. Hey, man. You know why I start in the doghouse? Because it's, all, it's always up from there. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord. <laughs> so God says, I'm going to send you a little girl. A little girl that you're going to have to raise, but this is God's way. But at the end of the day, your desire was, you wanted a good marriage, so we're praying for all of these different things. And again, I'm being silly when I say this. We pray in a certain way, in a certain realm, we ask asking God, so God still gives a strong marriage. Just sometimes he does it different than the way you ask him to do it. But at the end of the day, God's still God. And no matter what you face, nothing is too hard for the Lord. So not only nothing is too hard for the Lord in your perplexity, but nothing is too hard for the Lord as you pray. Write this down. Nothing is too hard for the Lord when we participate. Turn over Luke chapter number 1. What do you mean by this, Brother Jason? Well, I, I want you to understand there's a part that God does and there's a part that you must do. Everybody who thinks that God is a genie in the bottle, they can just say, well, ain't nothing too hard for the Lord. I'm just going to go to church and I'm going to do what I do. If he wants me to have a good marriage, whatever. If, if he wants my children to be able to stay at home, be happy, he'll take care of it. If he wants my husband to love me like he's supposed to, he'll make him love me. If he wants my wife, no, 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 no. no. If he wants my marriage, he'll bless my marriage. No, there's a part that God will do, but there's a part that you must do. And if you're ever going to realize the power that God has in your life, Yes, nothing is too hard for the Lord, but there are some things you must participate in. I want you to notice in Luke chapter number one, as you know this story, many of you know the angel comes to Mary, tells her she's going to have a child. The problem is that she's a virgin. Can I put you in the mindset of this young lady? This is a young lady that in this moment right here, she has been keeping her life for all of these years. She's been doing everything that she's supposed to do. Watch me now. And now all of a sudden she's going to have to answer questions. There's going to be eyes that's going to look at her because she's going to have child, but yet she's never been with a man. So her purity now is going to be in question. To a young lady that's been living for the Lord, that was a big deal to her. In other words, this was not a heathen. This was not somebody that was out of the will of God. This was somebody that was consistently trying to pursue God and live in God's will. Are you with me? Say amen. So the Bible says, notice in verse number 34, very quickly, it says, Then said Mary to the angel, How shall this be? In other words, I don't know how you're going to do this. 
Seeing I know not a man, I, 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 there's not, it's not even possible. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So here she is. She's now being told she's going to have a child. Pick up verse number 36. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. Verse number 37, notice these words, for with God nothing shall be impossible. I, I know it's not an exact word, but it's the same principle. Nothing shall be impossible. But watch me now. Here's the promise. Mary, 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 I'm going to take care of this. Mary, watch me now. I've got a plan for your life. Let's put your name and not Mary's. I've got a plan for your life, but watch me. I'm asking you to go through something that's not going to be easy. Look at me. The people around you is not going to understand what you're going through. You ever been there? God asked you. He put you in a situation that nobody else understands, but yet, matter of fact, to the place to where they even probably question you. So what happens? Verse 38, notice what the Bible says. And behold, Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Watch this now. Be it unto me according to thy word. In other words, 2023, that means yes, Lord. God, if this is what you choose for me, I'll do it. God, if this is what you have for me, I'll do it. How many times we say, Lord, I can't deal with these kids, or I can't deal with that wife, or I can't deal with that husband, or, or I, I can't deal with this job, and I don't know why it's me, Lord. You know what my heart is, or uh, this ministry is so hard, or what I'm doing, or whatever it is, it's so difficult. It's so hard. But the question is whether or not you're going to submit to what he calls you to do. He gave you that family because he knew that if you would submit to him, that that family would be what it needs to be. He gave you kids, that mom and dad, maybe they love Jesus, they don't love mom and Jesus, but he gave you that mom and dad. He strategically put you together because he knew that if you submitted to him, that somehow you could get the gospel to them, though they're supposed to be getting the gospel to you. But you know what we do? We preach and scream against abortion. And I understand what the Bible says. But yet we abort the very things that God's trying to do in our own life when he's birthing something. I wonder what a good message would be not on abortion, but aborting what God tries to make you deliver. Man, that's good preaching right there. Never thought about that. It's like we have the right to abort whatever God says. But yet we want to stand over here and say, no, that's not right. Who gave you the authority? You know, the sad thing, the tragedy is, is it's not that God's trying to devour you, to discourage you, to get you to disappear. God's trying to birth something in you. The great tragedy is you're the one who misses out on the blessing that God's trying to give. Because all God's trying to teach you is this, if you'll just participate. Now imagine right now if you used to go to my wife, and I'm just using this by example because all I can do is preach for my family. Maybe you can relate to it. Hey, do you want to go through that? she said, say no. Hey, do you want to go back through that herd? Do you want to go back through that mind? space that you were in she'd say no 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 you want to go through the abandonment do you want to go through the sleepless nights do you want to go through all the moments where it felt like you didn't know what was right or wrong she'd say no 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 why because the flesh don't always want to yield to what god wants us to do but watch me now According to the scripture, he's the same yesterday, today. He says, I am the Lord, I change. 
So if you can look back and see that he kept this promise and he knew better than you did then, what makes you think he ain't going to be the same now? I'm telling you, listen. The Lord is going to be faithful to you and nothing is too hard for the Lord as long as you choose to participate when you're supposed to. You know what some of us need to do this morning? We need to come down here, get around this altar and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, I'll love my husband. I'll be patient. Yes, I'll love my wife. Yes, I'll love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, yes, I will forgive. I don't want to forgive. But Lord, I'll forgive. Because this is what you're telling me. I, against my pride, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm admitting fault or failure. Lord, that's what I feel like. But against my better judgment, I will submit. Or maybe it's just yielding to something God's calling you to do or asking you to do in the church or the ministry. You say it's not convenient. It don't work out with my schedule. Financially, we can't afford it. I don't, you can make excuses all day. Whatever, watch me now. Again, we'll preach the sermon one day if God gives it to us. Whatever justifies your abortion to you, if you can live with it, so be it. But that don't mean it's right with God. And remember this. You could choose your choices, but you can never choose your consequences. And you may not suffer it today, but there will be years to come. God have mercy on all of us that we will have those consequences. I want you to turn your back on Matthew chapter number 19. I'll be done here. If somebody comes to the piano, I'll give you this very quickly. Not only the Lord... Nothing is too hard for the Lord in our perplexity, and nothing is too hard for the Lord as we pray, but nothing is too hard for the Lord as we participate. But lastly, listen to this. Nothing is too hard for the Lord as long as it's according to His purpose. His purpose. In context, Ma context Matthew chapter number 19 is about salvation. Matter of fact, Jesus is coming. He's speaking to the disciples. Verse number 23, I want you to notice, the Bible says this. He says, then Jesus, then said Jesus unto his disciples, verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly ever enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. Now, obviously, he's talking about salvation here, but I want you to notice something very clearly because you say, where do you, where do you get all this, Brother Jason? I want you to notice. The Bible says there in verse number 23 that a rich man shall hardly, it never says it's impossible. You go on reading in verse number 25, when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. What he's saying is a rich man is a blessed man. Before they begin the play, I want you to think about this. There's people right now, the reason why they will not accept Jesus Christ is because their life may be too blessed to think that they really have a need of a Savior. And what happens is, is we come to a place that what we think is that we literally can do for ourselves what we cannot. God is the only one that has the ability to save us. Sometimes when we are so blessed, we think so much of ourselves, we think we got it all figured out. And at the end of the day, that's the worst thing that we could ever have that's on our mind. So what God is saying right here is he's literally telling us that God has a purpose. And what is that purpose? His purpose is he's not willing that any should perish. And you have to trust him. And there's going to be times where you feel like you don't understand and and God is, is supposed to save folk, and, and you're thinking, Lord, I, I guess I just need to accept you ain't going to save them. What God is saying right here is, listen, I can save everybody. He's not willing that any should perish, but all. All means all in the Bible. If you believe that, say amen. So listen to me, mama, daddy, friend, family. 
don't quit praying. He didn't say it was impossible. He said hardly. In other words, it is still possible that they can get saved. But you just got to pray and trust the Lord because nothing is too hard for the Lord. She begins to play. I remember I was looking around when I was saying this. <laughs> Forget the year. Forgive me. I know it's August 31st. Michelle Tesler was saved. I am right on that, ain't I? I'll say that's my memory, I guess. <laughs> I never forget one day thinking about people that we think is too hard. I remember in those days my office was the next office over. Miss Michelle came in. It was a weekday. I didn't know nothing about her. All I knew was Brother Gary, Miss Melinda, her mom and dad. She walked in there. And you could just tell, and I say this very respectfully, there was no glow that was on her face. There was no light that was in her eyes. She'd been through some hard times. Like many of us, had probably made some choices. She got to the very end herself. Just like every other mom and dad, I'll never forget when they came and talked to me, they were burdened for Michelle. And as you can imagine, you better believe if they could have rolled out the red carpet from that front door all the way down to my office door, they'd have rolled it out because they were going to move everybody out of the way to be able to make sure that their baby got to talk to somebody about salvation. Anyway, I say that for this reason. You know, sometimes we forget where we come from. <laughs> Miss Michelle now is married. Cares herself, loves the Lord, takes notes. Had no appetite for God or the things of God. There is a light in her eyes. Her face does glow. She wants to serve the Lord. You say, what happened? Well, her mom and daddy realized that nothing was too hard for the Lord. Listen, I remember where I came from. I remember, I remember asking God that day, if you can, save me. He said, that ain't faith, a friend. That's how I felt. If you can save me. If you give me another chance. As I tell all of you, I put my fingers in my ears and close my eyes. And I realized that day that a broken heart, an empty heart, a lying heart, a bitter, a bitter heart. A lost heart, diffused, going nowhere. That man, God could take somebody like me and every, every issue I had, every temptation I had, every world that I was living in, all the things that I were doing, God could literally take those things and he could change my life. And at that moment, I didn't know the scripture, but I could definitely stand up that day and stand up and testify and say, listen, I just want to tell you because God saved me that nothing is too hard for the Lord. I'm going to say this today. I don't know what your situation is. To be honest, but Carlos, Miss Wilhelmina, man, the other day when I left the hospital, I was going to preach on the church today. I got reading the Bible. Man, I don't know why it tore me up about that baby. I was telling my wife, I talked to her. She didn't know. I called her. I said, I, I didn't even know what to tell this young lady. You know, you want to preach and say, is anything too hard for the Lord? But I had to be honest, Brother Larry, I'd never been in her shoes. And if I was in her shoes, forgive me, okay? I'm not trying to be blaspheme or not blaspheme God. I'd look, I'd look at a preacher and say, you know, well, tell your God to go ahead and fix all of this. Tell your God that I want to be back with my family. Tell your God that I want to be back with my child that's wondering where their mama is. I didn't have the words. Anyway, I got in that phrase about seeing is anything too hard for the Lord. Man, God spoke to my heart. I just want to say this to you today. I don't know who you are. You might not be going through something like that. I just want to tell you whatever it is, God's still able and God still can. I want to ask you today, would you choose to trust the Lord as they come and get ready to sing? Nobody move it around for just a moment. Heads bowed and eyes. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to know that you've tuned in. And I pray that today that the word of God that was shared will be a blessing to you. If somehow, some way that the Lord has spoke to your heart and maybe you're 
uh, sitting where you are and you don't know for sure that you're saved by the grace of God and you've ever trusted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, then I want you to know that the Word of God says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible makes it very plain, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You say, how do I get saved? You have to trust in Christ and Christ alone. Repent of your sin and then know as the Bible says where Jesus says, I am the way. And I pray that today that that will be your desire to be able to seek out for the Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to trust him as a Lord and Savior. If you do that today, and you repent of your sins and you take him as your Savior, would you do us a favor and contact our church office at 336-788-0551? We would love to be able to speak with you. We would love to be able to encourage you, maybe be able to help you find a local church no matter where you are today, and maybe even possibly disciple you. So we want to say thank you so much, and we are definitely going to be praying for you and this ministry that our church has. If you know you're saved and maybe the Lord spoke to you in a different way and there's something heavy on your heart, again, that same number, if you can contact us, we'll be so thankful to be able to reach out and be able to speak with you. But again, on behalf of the church and myself, thank you so much and may God bless you.